So good morning or good night, depending on where you are in the world. And welcome to another interview of The Shield Dude on a Couch. I'm your host, Hector. And today I'm joined for the second time on the channel because I interviewed him when the channel was like barely new two years ago. So I have Jacob from Kabam. And we're here to talk about the new album, The Formless Fire, Fires, that dropped a week ago. So Jacob, how are you today? Yeah, I'm doing fine. Uh, I'm doing uh, doing a lot of interviews, some press, some you know, all, all that stuff. Um, yeah, it's been a really, really warm day, and I'm not a big fan of uh, of the warmth. <laughs> I prefer I prefer winter or fall. I'm more of that kind of a guy. I'm mm -hmm. never been a big fan of, of of the summer. You know, when it's like too warm to even exist. <laughs> I used know. to be a fan of the summer, but I I moved back to Puerto Rico. The last time we talked, I was in Miami, but I moved back to Puerto Rico and there's there's no air conditioning here like Central and it's being hot. Right now it's 90 degrees. Uh, oh, but I have a fan and I'm doing I'm doing my interview literally on my couch. But yes, it's it, you would melt here, Jacob. It's it's like this. Yeah, I don't know if you ever played Mario Brothers. Uh, the Super Mario yes. game. Remember that yeah. uh, that level where the song was literally time to kill you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what it feels like. I feel like the song is trying to to kill me here. So I I know you where, where you're from. You know you are not used to this like extreme hot weather. And uh, so yeah, it's it's great to see you. The last since we talked, like we, you know, Caban is bigger now. My channel has been bigger, so it's it's been good two years for us. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, the big difference here is that you're now signed to Metal Blade Records, uh, which is awesome. So tell me a little bit about uh, how you got signed to Metal Blade. Yeah. Um, our booking agent, Jörg, uh, he, um, he sent a message to Andreas at Metal Blade. I was mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, they did, yeah, they talked a little bit, and then uh, I I started talking to Andreas, and you know, we had a little bit of email conversations back and forth, and uh, then he said, yeah, let's, uh, yeah, like Melway, I think they were having their 30 year anniversary at um, Summer Breeze Open Air, and we were performing at the same time. Uh, at at that festival, so it was a perfect opportunity for us to to meet and just hang out and you know talk about everything and nothing in between, and, and we did. And uh, I mean, um, the rest is history. Yeah, Here we are. Yeah, and I, you know, since I listened to the Great Below uh, when it came out for that interview, and now I listen to the Formless Fires. Definitely, the songwriting has gotten like higher on this record. Even though the great below was great, I think, uh, especially the way like you are using analogies on this one, I think it's uh, it's an improvement. And I guess that's what you want from album. You want to improve because I remember last time we talked, you were already saying that uh, you you were sick of the great below and you were moving forward at that time. Uh, so yeah, this new album, uh, the first single. Uh, the album opener, the the formless fires. I was reading that you almost gave gave this song to another band, but I'm like, yeah, this song is just too good to have given up to another band. So I, I'm glad you decided uh, to stick with it. Uh, what what made you stick with the with that song for Kaba? Uh I think it was because. Well, nothing was happening really with that project. It was a project I had together with Johan from this section, Ephraim from Nogglefar, Anders from Lord Belial. And nothing was really happening. I mean, we were all very busy with our with our bands. And so um, I was like, I can write I can write another song like this some other time. So I'm like, hey guys, I'm taking the song to the <laughs> Kvan album. And Johan was like, no, it's such a good song. And then I'm like, yeah. That's why I'm going to take it to yeah. Kvan. <laughs> yeah, you can tell them there's like an American saying, saying you snooze, you lose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I noticed that the door opened, but I didn't see anyone. I'm like, ooh, spooky. <laughs> yeah, give me a minute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
I, I'm like, yeah. I was like, maybe some evil shit is about to happen. <laughs> well, oh, we're doing, always. Well, we're doing the <laughs> the interview. So, I remember on the last record you tackled themes of suicide, but you tackled them again on this one on a song, the Doda song. Uh, I mean, no, I wish her the language with uh, and the. But this is an interesting because I was reading the background and this is about a mass suicide people that go and jump off a precipice. So tell me a little bit more about that because I thought that was very interesting. Yeah, so the song is about Etesup, a Norse ritual from very, very, a very long time ago. Uh, there, what I found fascinating about this is that there is no, there is no proof that it has actually happened. Oh. It's more like, you know, it's more like, you know, a story you tell, you know, but an at urban the same legend. time, there are an urban legend. Yeah. But, but there are, of course, people who are more or less convinced that yes, this actually, this, this kind of rituals actually happen. And, um, I, and, uh, it is not inspired by the movie Midsommar because I think that's a shitty movie. <laughs> <Which> movie? <laughs> yeah. Midsommar, Midsommar. I you, see know that what? One? you know what? I, there's, I didn't see that movie because I saw Hereditary and everyone's like, oh, Her Hereditary, it's so great. And I'm like, I really don't see what's so great about it. So I didn't see that. No, movie. I thought yeah. I thought Hereditary sucked as well. So, look, <laughs> I, I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not the only one because I remember a friend of mine, he's like, you got to see Hereditary. It's the most scary thing ever. And I saw it and I'm like, yeah, so this little girl, she gets her her head lost and the mother is crazy. I'm like, I didn't think it was that scary. I'm sorry, people. Uh, so Midsummer, I didn't see it because it was from the same director. And I'm not a, a real horror fan. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it has to be like really, uh, I think there's, I like it more when it's like based on true events. That thing is more mm -hmm. scary to me than, you know, made up shit. Uh, but, I so I'm glad that you said that it's not, uh, I didn't see the movie, so I wouldn't have asked because uh, I I never saw the movie, so I don't know. So yeah, it's an interesting track. And also you have a, a song that tackles like a mythical creature, a uh, snake with basilisk, which uh, I wasn't uh, I, I wasn't uh, too like familiar with it. So and you say that it's not being covered. Uh, mm. So tell me a little bit about, about that one, because there's a lot of mythology on this record. Yeah, the basilisk is the king of serpents. And there is an urban telling that if you stare into the eyes of the basilisk, it it uh, you die. That's and good. this is, uh, yeah, and, uh, and uh, I, I've always been fascinated with these mythological creatures. So the basilisk was an obvious choice to write about because no one has ever, or a few people have done that. So uh, I decided, of course, I'm going to write about the king of serpents. Yeah, no, I never heard anyone write about it. Uh, my favorite true tracks from the record, besides the Formless Fire, are I like Tornet Sang. I really like that one because on that one, uh, there's a lot of like singing on that song. It's like a, mm. you know, it's because you know, you, you have a lot of like black metal vocals, like blast beats, but that's one sounded a little bit different with the singing. Tell me about the inspiration for that one having that uh, singing part, which really makes it stand out uh, be, with the rest of the track. Mm. Yeah. Well, Tunet's song is basically about, it's about Ragnarök, the end of the world. Uh, and I um, I didn't want to have like a cheesy titled like Ragnarök or whatever. So I call it Tunet's song and uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, yeah, it's basically about Ragnarök and uh, yeah, the, I, I think the chorus part is, is what you mean. And yeah, the I knew that part is it's, very infectious, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, I knew that I, I needed to have something that no one would expect would, would come, you know. And I, I don't think you would expect that chorus with the first time you listen to it. And uh, I, I like to shock <laughs> when I write songs and like do things I'm like, what was that? Real? Like, what? It's either like, it's a positive thing or like more like an like a negative what, what the fuck <laughs> yeah, no it reminded so... me of a little bit of like a chorus for uh kebeler 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 because they have some like type of choruses like that so yeah it 
it really like, oh, this this is different uh, for Caban. So yeah, I think that's mm. in a good way. And the perpetual darkness, that song, it's just, I know uh, it's about uh, being an outcast and like shown with society. Uh, it's a great track and really like dark and menacing. Uh, what inspired that track for you? Well, I've always been a big fan of like the Gothic, Gothic like music scene and or Gothic in general, like like the whole uh, like the whole thing about about it. I, I've always been very fascinated. And I, one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and I was watching it with my friend uh, one night, and I was like, this this story is so amazing. Like, I, I and I got inspired to write something that is sort of sort of in that theme. Like if you listen to music wise, it's very dark, yeah. very gloomy, and that it has this weird gothic feel to it somehow. So that's kind of where like the music inspiration came from. from is from that the, the, movie. the movie with Gary Oldman, right? Yeah, yes. That yeah. is a good movie. Yeah. Did, did you put yeah. like a picture of Gary Oldman in full makeup to, <laughs> to inspire yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm joking with you, but yeah, that, that's a great track, and and then you 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 follow up with the wings of death. Uh, so yeah, for, it's 39 minutes, but you know, uh, it's it really flows well, and uh, I think it's a, to me musically, it's a step up from the great below in terms of production, uh, songwriting. Uh, so tell me a little about. When you were writing this album, what was the writing process like for you, differently from the great below? Uh, well, I was way more focused this time. Maybe I mean the 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 process of writing songs is always the same, but I guess I was in a completely different state of mind this time. I was more focused. I was more clear on what I wanted to do, and I want to make a product that can really like really show how much I have matured as a songwriter. And uh, well, as, as as a songwriter, the last thing you want is to, you know, you someone buys your album and they put it on and they've, they're like, yeah, I don't feel anything. That's kind of like the last thing you want. What, what I really want is like to, to show everyone that, you know, or try to convince everyone that I put my heart and soul into this. And by doing that, you have to be a hundred percent determined on, on what you want to do and how you want things to sound. And uh, I think that was the hardest accomplishment, I think. But I think I managed to do that, or I don't think I know I, I, I accomplished that that part. Yeah. Uh, so I'm I'm very proud of myself for for being able to do that. And of course, writing. I think all songs on this album are great. And there is, as per usual with Kvan, there is something for everyone. Yeah, and the music video for the Asian Gods is also a good one. You know, you have the full uh, makeup and 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 you know, like you get a feel of what it is uh, to see the band performing live. So I, I want to show the the artwork for the new album, uh, which is a pretty cool artwork, so we can discuss it. So here's the artwork for the Formless Fires. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. You know, you know, you have the fires, the colors. Tell me a little bit about what you wanted to convey with this artwork. Yeah, so the artwork basically, there is something from every song on the artwork. I think so like you, have the, you did that with the yeah. bass too as well, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you you have the basilisk, you have the towers, the two net song, the towers. And you have, yeah, basically everything from, from the album is there, you have the portal to the wings, <laughs> yeah, you know everything that 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 you uh, that you hear on the album is is there, is connected. Uh, so, and, and I think that's very important to me. I want I want uh, the album cover to resonate with with the music. It's very important because I mean, if you go to a, a record store and you look at the album cover, like shit, this album cover looks killer, and you you buy it and you come home and you put on music, and it's like. There, there's nothing about this album cover that resonates with the music. <laughs> so uh, I really put a lot of focus into into the album art, really 
really you know being uh, like relative to the music no yeah and, and you captured that and yes it's uh, i agree with you sometimes you buy something because you see the album artwork and yeah this is a great album artwork who's the artist for this one uh it's a friend of mine called you you uh, we have been uh, we have been talking for years about doing something but the timing was never right there's always you know we we never really we never really had it, the the time to do something uh, but now finally you know we um I, i gave him a call and i was like yeah now we can actually do something together that i need you i need you to do the artwork and it's going to be great <laughs> And uh, he gladly accepted. Yeah, and, no. like, um, and I'm so happy he did because I mean, look at it; it's, it's awesome. No, it is awesome. Yeah, and 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 it really goes uh, with the themes and the music on this record. Uh, so yeah, so you know, you had the years. You uh, you feel more com like you said. You feel more comfortable now with the way that you write songs. Uh, like each album, this is the third album. You can see like the improvement uh like, uh what do you think like what do you think makes you more comfortable now as a song writer well i think um whatever every release i do mm -hmm. i know that i have to um i have to be able to you know develop some you know develop in some field whether it's mm -hmm. my guitar mm -hmm. playing or whether it's this mm -hmm. or that mm -hmm. but for, for me it's super super important to to see that i have become better at something and that's i think uh when i look at it from from a like from the first album to this album i see that the, the maturity of my writing has improved and even comparing to the last album i mean it's it's a huge step up and uh this is like Yeah, I can. I can only see it going up from here. Like, I, I don't. I don't think it's ever going to stop because I'm always, always on the run and uh, for, uh, always on the run for new inspirations and new ways to take my music to the next level. So, yeah, and obviously having the backup of Metal but Metal Blade Records help. I mean, you know, such a great record label behind this project. So that that that's awesome as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. Yeah. So the album's been out a week now. Uh, what was the, how has the, the reception so far been for, being for the album? Yeah, it's been, it's been really good actually. Um, I haven't seen anything bad so far. It's always good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. Uh, uh, mostly they're all good reviews or really good reviews and, uh, a lot of good reviews so but uh, i mean it, it all depends on like i think we talked about this last time i mean it's i i love constructive criticism so when i read a review i i, I don't read a lot of reviews but oh yeah but we some are a little bit about that yeah yeah so, some reviews i find like oh i really want to read this review because i like the way that this person writes or whatever So I, I don't, like if someone gives the album 10 out of 10 and it just, there are a lot of misinformation and you know, they didn't do their background check and then I'm like, okay, well, cool, thank you, but doesn't really say anything. <laughs> Rather yeah. than it's if someone gives like 8 out of 10 and there's like a lot of research behind it and ways of thinking, and that, that's what I like, you know. It's, and I think that's what every creative artist wants to have like if they're having a discussion of a music or art in general i think it's super important to be able to have a discussion where a lot of the crit constructive criticism takes part yeah that that makes sense because sometimes i review albums that aren't that great for example last week i reviewed the last album by kitty and i saw a lot of like written reviews are like oh this is a five this is a great comeback and i, I was like No, it's not. <laughs> so uh, I did like an honest review saying like, yeah, I have some good songs, some songs that were so-so. And someone said, put to me a comment with all the positive reviews. And I told him, you know, I don't give a shit about what, <laughs> what a magazine writes. I'm going <laughs> to say what I feel, that I have my opinion. So, but yeah, hmm. like if it's like a 10 out of 10, yeah, I think I would rather read something that's like an eight. It explains Like maybe like hey I like this but maybe there's something here 
that, that can improve. But I did listening to this album. I thought this album I, I had a more like uh, cohesive uh, from. I like the great below, but I think this one definitely <laughs> step up musically. And and there's you know there's tighter songs. So uh, I I agree when I listen to it. I'm like yeah, I can see the the progression. So uh, Jacob, we're almost at at the half way point of the year and usually i like to uh ask uh, you know musicians like if there like any other band beside yourself like that you're being listening to that that, that you like this year uh you know i've been i'm a terrible terrible person when it comes to <laughs> finding out n new music but uh, Maybe, the latest what, what are you currently spinning that it doesn't have to be new uh well, I've been listening a lot to the latest Trotting Christ album. I think that's probably going to be my favorite. Yeah. yeah, I think that's going to be my album of the year. I think it has everything that I I, I want from. Uh, it's I've always been a big fan of the Greece metal scene from Greece because it's Good, yeah. it's such a unique sound, and uh, I I, I um, I'm a little bit tired of the Nordic sound right now. I I don't know. I'm a little bit tired of it. So listening to something like the latest Rotten Christ was like, oh, this is this is so great! Like, wow, that would be we a have... great band to tour with. Like, Abs yes, yeah. I think I I I think uh, I mean, Quan would be a perfect match for that band, for yeah. sure. Yeah, no, and then this that's a band they actually played in Puerto Rico, but when they played, I wasn't here. But but it's funny because sometimes in Puerto Rico we get like. Uh, pe like this Christian group, like picketing, and they picketed for mm -hmm. bands like, <laughs> like I think they picketed for bands that are like less satanic sounding, and for Rotting Christ because it was in a smaller venue, you, <laughs> no, <laughs> nobody said anything because it was a small venue. Like they went by without no one noticed, and I, I really was told that they put on a great, amazing live show. Both like musically yeah. and the way they came out dressing, you know, like Asian Greek like words or gods. So uh, I actually haven't I haven't listened to that new album. I have, I have to go around and li listen to that one because I haven't listened to the new Rod in Christ album. So no, but I, I listen to it because I've I've heard some reviews saying that it's uh, like a really good and I think it's a concept record if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I think so as well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that would be yeah uh, like uh, a great band to uh, to tour with. But yeah, I, I know what you mean about the Nordic scene because sometimes it can get like uh, like uh, can get repetitive. So I can see where you're coming from. So uh, besides Rotting Christ, if you if you could tour with another band, uh, which band would mm. would be? Oh wow, um, let me think about that. I mean, there are so so many bands that. I mean, Kvan is a band that would fit a lot of bills because we are, there's so much variation in our music, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, I mean, I could easily see ourselves like, let's say that uh, the Immortal guys would still be around. I think Immortal and Kvan would be a great fit. Um, I could also see you like with Behemoth. That would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Behemoth, absolutely. That 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 would would be uh, that would be really cool. Uh, I mean, there are so many bands. Jesus, I mean, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I could definitely see us with with Abath right now, for example. Mm -hmm. Abath would be really cool. Uh, yeah, so so many bands, but Rotting Christ, Immortal, Abath, Behemoth, something like that. Sure. Yeah, that would be cool. So. Uh... So the album is out now. Like, what are uh, is there some tours or shows that you're gonna be playing soon? Yeah, so uh, I just came home from a small mini tour with the release shows, uh, and uh, so I'm recharging the batteries now for a little little while, and then we're going back to some festivals, do some some shows in between, and then we'll probably have some some more stuff coming up for the fall or later this year when it's not uh, as hot. tour <laughs> sorry when it's not as hot because i'm when sure it, yeah like if you play summer festivals and if they put you like oh you open at noon fuck <laughs> that has to be like mm. uh, 
and you guys wear a lot of stuff like it has to be too hot uh to play at, at that time yeah that's but that's not a worry i mean we're we're, <laughs> we're a rock and roll band you know we it's not like we're gonna cancel because of the weather no i know I'd rather <laughs> you, you play so, because you play yeah 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 so jacob i, I wanna it's it's been awesome to chatting with you again two years later and i'm glad that uh that uh that kabang has been doing so well uh so i much success to the band so uh couchers if you haven't listened to the formless fires is out now through metal blade records uh i put the link so because there's still a lot of variants for the vinyls if you want to uh order a vinyl you can do so and they have different variants for metal blade records and the band will be touring more soon so keep an eye on their socials i'll post the link on on you know on the description so uh before i let you go jacob anything you like to say to the to the fans before we say goodbye yeah uh thank you so much for the support as always i'm so so uh grateful and uh yeah blessed to blessed to have so many so many people liking what i do and uh also a big thank you to you for taking your time to show your interest in talking to me yeah yeah for the second time it's, it's good to, to catch up so people oh, yeah. until next time this is hector the shield dude on a couch and i'll see you all right here on the couch thank you and goodbye